We're gonna react to Clarence Kennedy and all the crazy lifts that he's done over the last 15 years, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so who is Clarence Kennedy? And and I actually like this video a lot because it sort of sort of holds real real tight to my heart. <laughs> I remember all the way back like 2008 to 2010, uh, I was working a desk job and I would get excited even back then when Clarence Zero would start to post things on YouTube when when you know he would update his posting and I I vividly remember even when he went I think the the European champs was in like Israel even when he went to compete at European champs and I and I also remember people just complaining that he didn't compete that well he might have bombed in the clean and jerk or something like that but the the mystique behind him is that he was a trickster or parkour um, athlete and he started to do weightlifting and he just really really got into weightlifting and I believe he's one of those rare people who's bridged the gap between weightlifting and the world that is outside of weightlifting he's gotten other people into the sport for good measure for good reason and I think that I'm excited to do this because I want to see some of the crazy transformations that he's gone through over the last 15 years Okay, so Clarence is a Irish individual. I think now he lives in Britain or you know maybe Wales, I think. But I think I also believe that tricking, I think, is you know basically doing like just flips and I mean basically like just crazy, crazy stuff. Whereas parkour is like you're actually going across buildings and stuff like that. So in my mind, tricking and parkour are just absolutely phenomenal uh, physical tests. And so I think, I think when he started to try to get better at tricking, his whole goal was that he wanted to be able to jump, jump higher um, so he could do crazier moves. And that's how he got deeper into weightlifting because he wanted to be able to, to jump higher and perform you know, crazier stuff like this. Dude, this video is so awesome. I love this stuff. I love seeing athletes just do crazy creative stuff for no good measure either. Like, like I love seeing athletes do crazy competitive stuff where it's just, you know, he's not like he's doing this stuff with a, with a crowd behind him. He's just going in and trying to better himself, trying to get better all the time. And look at that technique. You know what's interesting that I want to point out is, um, so he didn't make contact on that first clean and jerk that we just saw. And even now, as he's a freak of nature now in weightlifting, he, he makes contact, but it's, it's not, he's not really banging the bar like you see some, some guys. He's just got like a little bit of a bump in there and, and his, that's also, I, you know, I really like his movement, his technique. Okay, so he's 100 kilos, 15 years old, he clean and jerked 100 kilos, and then he does, that's so awesome. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to have so much fun watching this video. This is great. You can see there too, he's got good ankle mobility, good hip mobility. Clearly a well-trained specimen. And by all accounts, I believe like self-trained almost entirely. Okay, so this is 2010. This is when I remembered, um, I think around 2010, 2011 is when I remember him starting to post stuff on YouTube. My memory might serve me incorrectly, but for, for weightlifting, I believe it was around 2010, 2011 when I first started to see some of the stuff he was doing. Because I remember then too, he, he starts to shift into a, his training starts to shift into like a church. Actually, I think this might be the place. 140 with a squat jerk, holy crap. Just gets pancaked by that clean, 17 years old, 140. So he's starting to get pretty strong. A 17 year old a clean jerk, 140. That's good, that's, that's legit, especially he's not, he's not overly big. 
Okay, this is definitely what I remember right here. 115, and he was, yeah, so he had this, this gym set up in the corner. He's also one of the few athletes, you know, he was posting pretty consistently, and I think that that, that happening, you know, there wasn't a lot of people back on YouTube at that, at that point. Okay, so 150, 120. Now you can start to see his technique starting to get better. So people out there, like we've got to rem realize, okay, from 140 to 155, notice the difference in his technique. And, one, and from 110, you know, so his technique's getting better. He didn't get pancaked as bad on that when he's still 17 years old. Now he's at 122 and a half, so 270 pounds. So you're starting to see where that technique is really starting to pay off. He moves his knees really well off the floor. I want to see his knees, foot movement's pretty good. He doesn't jump all over the place. He goes into his first comp, I think this is 149. So he was a power jerker back then, nice. I don't think I remember, this is, I remember vividly all these big time squat videos in the corner of this gym too, when he, he starts to really push his squats big time. Okay, so he's still 17, 160, 206 kilos here. Dude, so this dude is just a, it's like he's a robot. Like, I think that's another example with, um, with really good lifters and with really good athletes in general is like, you have to have a robot mentality where it's just, dude, you're gonna go in, you're gonna do work and you're gonna get better over and over and over again. And it's gonna take decades, like, 15 plus years to get really, really, really good. Still 17, he pushes that to 165. Starting to get thicker. Got that double bounce. Doing the split. Technique's getting a lot tighter here. Dives forward, could have moved that front forward a little, front foot forward a little more. Now it's 170, still 17. Definitely getting thicker. So when he cleaned 170, he can back squat 220. That's a good number for everybody out there to realize that to clean 170, you basically gotta hit that 220 back squat. Doing heavy pulls, 135. One seventy-five. He's really starting to blow up here. Three hundred pound snatch. Monster squat, two hundred thirty kilos. Hundred forty-one kilos, dude. This is just—he's got to be training like super heavy all the time. He's just blowing up with these weights, and this is where his jerk technique's starting to get a little bit better there uh, with that split. That front foot's starting to move a little bit cleaner. Here's one eighty. He's got no knee sleeves on. I don't know if he has a belt on there. 250K, he's still 17. I would love to know how many hours he would be in the gym like on a weekly basis. And, he, and I know he does train basically Bulgarian. It's like now I, I'm assuming even all the way back to here, this is what he was, that's how he was training. I don't know if he had a technical focus. Dude, he's pushing major increases there. I mean, that's a 150 snatch in a year from 137. Now he's at a 400, 400 pound clean. Got a little stuck in the bottom of that jerk, but he's so strong. 190, 192, or 190 kilos is when it's, that's some real <laughs> legit weights. 180's real legit weights. Okay, triple body weight back squat, 262 and a half. So that's huge. That is a huge back squat at 18 years old. That's enormous. To 
put that in perspective, we've got Nick Singleton, who's the best running back in the country right now, and he might be able to do that. Maybe, probably not. Now his technique in the snatch is really starting to pick up. I know he's got straps on, but that looked good. 200K split jerk. A little soft on it, but nice. As he gets stronger, you're going to see he gets pancaked a lot less. I know that 197. That's what's crazy. These weights are huge weights. 197. 226 front squat. That's 500 pounds. I know the discussion has, so this is 195. The discussion's always been drug usage. I don't think he was taking, I don't think he was taking shit back here. I really don't. I think this is when he went to Poland. I do remember, I think he went to Poland for a little trip. 162 and a half. I could be completely wrong with that, but I don't think he's on gas at this age. 19, I could be wrong. I think he starts to gas up a little bit later, like 2016, 2017. Hurts his knees bad in 2014. One sixty-five, twenty-one years old. Yeah, now you can see he's starting to get real thick and just moves. He's moving a little bit better. And so even think about that too. Is like he had pretty serious knee issues. Two ten is huge. Two ten is so heavy. One seventy is so heavy. <laughs> I think pay attention, it's like paying attention to his movement, his technique, how he's receiving the bar, how strong he is, you know, like taking those numbers, those back squat and front squat numbers and correlating them over to his, his competitive lifts. You know, here's where he might be on the sauce, snatching 170 plus, clean jerk 210 maybe. I would, I'd just be interested because for interest sake, not judging him. You know, he can do whatever he wants to do. 220 at 21. <laughs> Bar looks like it has a thousand pounds on it. 300 kilo of that deadlift. That's a huge deadlift. 300 kilos is huge. 250 front squat. Quads are just, he's huge now. 280 pause back squat. It's funny because even when you, you know, that's 215. When you when you have a bar with weights like that, it it's it's actually really hard to time that that dip like at the turnaround because of the way the, the the whip is going. He's huge here. He's pretty big. Dude is intense and a hard worker, grinder. But I, what I wanted to say, 727 deadlifts is enormous, is, and I think that was a double over hook, is that using like these, these numbers, so 300K pause back squat, that's tough, 225. Using, using the numbers of his strength movements, five second pause at 250, that's insane. Comparing that to his competitive lifts, Recognizing that he also, everybody's dealing with some type of injury at some point, some type of nagging pain. I think it's important to understand that this stuff doesn't happen overnight. You know, he, it took him 10 to 15 years to be able to do absurd things like what he's doing right now. <laughs> and he really didn't lose much mobility at all. 750 pound deadlift. All right, maybe 21, 22 is when he got on the gas. He looks huge here. Just like I wish, there, like he should put together a little experiment or a little write-up of what happened with his numbers and how he felt overall um, and his performance in general, motivation. Was he more motivated? I would assume so. Because um, he is bright. My understanding is that he's extremely bright. So he he's also based off of his training, he's also gotta be really aware of him, his overall feeling. Dude, these are, these are just crazy. Pause squats at 306. 
we trade some of the best athletes in the world and 306, they couldn't even normal back squat. You know, they're some of the most explosive athletes in the world. And Clarence is clearly, I, I think that's what is so interesting with him is he's literally like a 265 for 10. He, he's, he's a mythical figure, right? He's just so explosive, so powerful, good technique. A little weird with that right foot coming in a little bit. I think this is when he works up and hits that, what, 200K. See, I always like his technique because it's like good into the hip. He doesn't throw his head back all over the place. Footwork is quick, quick and smooth. He's so strong, he receives that bar so tightly. Now, you know, that's taken years. That's a little forward, but... That's a good tight dip right there. Front foot moved really well. Look how big, look how high his hips were on that back flip. There's a Romanian guy back behind him. 230. Thanks for watching, no problem Clarence. Great video, great inspiration. I think my big takeaways from, from Clarence is it, it shows everyone how long this stuff takes to be one of the strongest in the entire world. And I also think it goes back to what are his goals? You know, I think he competed in a couple weightlifting events, but it, he's more about just being internally motivated and pushing those heavy weights and, and realizing that you're probably gonna get hurt at some point, so deal with that and, and have that mental preparation. And just as you get ridiculously strong, you've also gotta hone in on your technique so that you can move a little bit more precisely. I think this is just an absolutely phenomenal video. I think Clarence Kennedy is one of the best weightlifters in the entire world. And yes, he has come out and said uh, he uses drugs, but the, the fact of the matter is he, he doesn't compete. So does that bother me? No. I don't think it should really bother anybody. He could do whatever he wants as long as he's not competing. So go check out Clarence Kennedy's YouTube channel. I think he's one of the more entertaining guys out there. Very zeroed in, very focused, phenomenal athlete, and one of the best channels that I think on YouTube as far as just understanding what goes into the process. If you need help with your weightlifting though, and your technique sucks, click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com, pick up one of our weightlifting technique programs to help you smash those PRs. Until next time guys, peace.